Good evening, baseball fans. It is May 6th. It is a Monday. Tell us we missed out on this de Mayo. We yeah. Tequila. I know. We should have been bringing you baseball content with tequila. We are a day late. The day before Cinco de Mayo. I always remember that it's Cinco de Mayo because the day before is the May the 4th Star Wars people day. And I don't know how you feel about Star Wars, but... I wanted to kick things off tonight by asking you the very important question of if you had to pick Star Wars or tequila. There is no question. It's just, it's always tequila. 99% of anything that you pair with, like, or tequila, it, it's going to be tequila. It's probably, okay. that's a good, yeah. Um, do you, you have a specific yeah. type of tequila that you like? Silver, chilled, yeah. with lime, no salt. Ooh, no salt. Okay. I like lots of salt with my tequila, but I also heavily prefer silver tequila. Always the silver tequila. With that said, guys, I'm Susie. That is Kelsey. And I realized that I wasn't like watching back. I always pointed like the wrong way. So now I have to point the opposite way. And hopefully I'm pointing the correct way when you guys watch this on the YouTubes. Anyhow, so I am Susie. That is Kelsey. This is Bourbon to Baseball, all the balls edition. We have no tequila. We don't even have any bourbon because I suck as a podcast host, fairly. But I am going to give you the rated R warning off the job because I am a considerate host above all. So this is a rated R podcast for all of the four letter words and most likely all of the adult humor. So if there are tiny children around that you don't want to learn new four letter words or any new phrases that they shouldn't be learning, you should probably turn this off because we're going to get into it. With that said, just be forewarned because there's going to be lots of things to talk about. So Kels. When is the last time you shot tequila? Oh, oh man, it, it wasn't that long ago. I think it was when I went to the Cubs Dodgers game before the Cubs Dodgers game with my mom. Oh, she's okay. badass, and that's how we do it. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, so you did tequila shots with your mom? Yes, the last time I shot oh. tequila, I do believe it was with my mother. <laughs> that, that within is, the last month. <laughs> that is amazing. I love that. If I spoke to my mom that's still not something that we would ever actually do because i don't think i've ever seen my mom drink alcohol eventually though hopefully i will be that mom with my child oh, yeah goals mm -hmm. oh. no my mom is definitely goals when it comes to that or really you just had to shoot the tequila in order to watch a cubs doctor's game let's exactly just be for me yes and i was like let's have some fun let's shoot some tequila let's yeah. numb a cardinals fan up before we take her into this territory mm -hmm. this is true every year around this time all of the Star Wars stuff comes out and may the fourth be with you and blah, 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 blah. And I am apparently one of the very few people on this earth that have never seen any Star Wars. And every time I tell people that they're, they, I have committed some sort of like cardinal sin. I'm all, it's not like yeah. I killed people. I just, I haven't watched <laughs> Star Wars and they're all, well, why not? I don't want to. I, I was forced yeah. to watch the Star Wars with, Jar Jar Binks? I don't even know which one. The, one guess. of the new ones. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. That's the only Star Wars that I've ever actually quote unquote watched. And I was like dragged at midnight to the theater and I fell asleep. <laughs> and my ex-husband got very upset with me. I'm like, I don't know why you're mad. I A, didn't want to go and it's midnight. So you think I was going to stay awake for a movie that I didn't want to watch? I don't No, That's just science. Yeah. Can't be blamed. So, I've never seen any of the Star Wars and every single time people just get so mad at me. And they're like, we're going to watch Star Wars. I'm like, the fuck, we're not. So I probably will go to my grave not ever watching Star Wars. But they're like, how do you, what? I'm like, dude, I know the references, the whole, the, the Yoda thing and the, these are not the droids you're looking for, Chewbacca. That's probably more than I know. I think I've seen, I think when I was young, I watched one or two of the original ones, like the ones that Carrie Fisher is mm -hmm. in. But that is definitely, I don't recall it. I don't, right. I have zero desire to ever watch it again. But I do have, Friend, some friends and family who are very seriously into it and that's cool i don't judge them i do, i hope they don't judge me but yeah i feel yeah. the same i don't oh no they're judging you they are for sure judging you for sure at least not if it's not your face they're for sure judging you in their hearts and they're like mm -hmm. no i don't know if we can be friends with that kelsey girl that doesn't watch star wars so if you watching watching losing baseball so. that i don't know which one would be worse for me at this point in time i, I honestly don't know I mean, where I was. Anyhow. Kels, I have come to realize that I can only consume so much baseball that hurts my heart. And then I have to turn it off. 
mm. and then go and watch other baseball that doesn't hurt my heart. Then I'm like, oh, baseball, yay. Maybe that's just me, though. So is, is that you, too? Or can do you, do you gut out all of the game? I, after last season, I can say I still, I watched every single one. I stuck with it. But that's me. Like, I, it's something that I am able to watch it in a way that allows me to still find the silver linings and still enjoy and have takeaways of certain things. I definitely also watched other teams to help balance it out and help me have other things to be excited about. But I totally understand. And I actually talked about that this exact thing on my episode of Peace, Love, and Baseball that's coming out tomorrow that like you had sometimes you got to protect yourself. You got to look out for number one and mentally, emotionally, sometimes you just got to choose not to watch every single game when your team is not playing up to par. Yeah, no, I am watching all of the games. I'm just not watching the entirety of the game. Like when I already know sure. mm -hmm. that they're going to lose, I'm all, yeah. I don't think I can watch these last three outs or I don't know if I can watch this last Like it's one of those things where I'm all, you got to give yourself permission to check out. Yep. Literally killing me. Anyhow, with that said, we're going to tell you guys about some other things besides the depression that the Astros have sent me in and parts of baseball that make me happy, make Kelsey happy. Things that you should know about in and around the league that make me laugh, make me smile. So, but first we're going to, we're going to talk about the 40 man fine shine. Yes. Oh yeah. We got to bring it back because this is just our weekly reminder for you that we are known ball knowers of that because you're here. And yeah, there's a couple of good call outs. Obviously, we've already mentioned Colton Kowser because he's doing all the things, making all the headlines. And he was named the AL Rookie of the Month for March slash April, the first month of the baseball season. And then our guy, Richie Palacios, Tampa Bay Rays, 40 man find. He has been starting for the Tampa Bay Rays with Josh Lowe on the IL. He is batting 295. Flashing 421, 449 with an 870 OPS in his 96 at bats. He has three doubles, three home runs, five stolen bases, and 16 walks. Nice. With that 870 OPS, he has a higher OPS than every single player on the St. Louis Cardinals besides Wilson Contreras, which Cardinals fans are absolutely reeling over because Richie Palacios was traded from the Cardinals to the Rays in the offseason. Granted, his counterpart for that trade is doing very well for the Cardinals, but it hardly matters because they don't have the offense that Richie Palacios is out there giving to the Tampa Bay Rays. Have you watched Richie play at all this year? I've watched a couple of various plays from him, but I want to say that Josh Lowe came off the aisle today. Yeah, he's coming but back. So it's going to be interesting I, to see what his playing time looks like moving forward. And also... No, I'm not going to tell you about him because I'm going to keep him until I can pick him up on my fantasy team. And then I will tell you about somebody else that, that you guys should know about. But until I pick him up on my fantasy team, you guys aren't going to know about him. I have to tell you about the twins, the Minnesota twins. Just, you know, the Baltimore Orioles, they've got their Homer hose. Their mm -hmm. Mariners got their tridents. The Minnesota twins have a summer sausage. They have a summer sausage. And they literally throw the meat at one another. I have it's, not seen this. <laughs> you have not? Oh, I'm so excited to tell you about the Minnesota Twins and the throwing of the meat at wow. one another at each other's faces. Yeah. Okay. And it's, it is a literal summer sausage that I think Kyle Farmer is sponsored by a sausage company or something. <laughs> and he had this freaking log just this roll of meat and he i guess had it in his backpack or something and he just he didn't want it so he threw it to one of the coaches one of the coaches set it on the table in the clubhouse and then carlos Santana, who has been scuffling this season started going off he hit his first home run and when he came back into the dugout as he was like running back into the dugout kyle farmer chucks this sausage at Carlos Santana and Carlos Santana being like, what the fuck? And it's amazing. And then they went on to win 12 games in a row because they had all of their hands on the meat. All I was going to say is, was this what started that, that yeah. 12 game rally? Wow. Wow. How yeah. It, it's all of the meat. Yeah. And Bronco Baldelli, it's just, I don't, I don't know what's happening with this. I don't want to be around when this opens. And so there, I don't know the difference between apparently summer sausage and like regular sausage, but the summer sausage apparently doesn't need to be 
refrigerated because it's smoked and, and oh. shit. And there's, I, I don't know, I think it's smoked and salted. And so it's supposed to be like left out or whatever, but okay. it's in the wrapping. And you see this wrapping get more and more mangled. Yeah. And so now I'm all, I need, I need words. I need help here. What actually happens when it actually busts open and the meat just hits somebody in the face? Yeah, the level of superstition here is intense and troublesome in that regard. Yeah. And it's made road trips. And it's made road trips. Like, I don't be queasy. They're big leaguers. So obviously, I guess the clubbies have to handle it. And they just tell the clubbies, hey, this meat has got to make it. To <laughs> if they trust them with it, I'm literally picturing them swaddling it, holding it like a baby. I'm, I'm super surprised that you have not seen this. It's hysterical. And they, there's literal... There are literal shots of them throwing fucking meat at each other. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I uh, catch up on this twin content. Yeah. It makes me laugh. And also it makes me laugh because of all of the inappropriate adult humor jokes that's just running through my head. I mean, they're, they are writing them for you. Yeah. Literally writing. You know it. Like there's, mm-hmm. yeah, there's no avoiding that. They're, no. they're embracing it with this choice. Absolutely. So I'm like, all right, I love it. I love it. That's one fun thing that that has happened. Another fun thing that has happened. I say fun. I don't know if it's fun. Me, different, maybe different. Be yeah. that real. And I was not aware of how, why bees go to the things where they do. But if you are ever interested in it, there is a great breakdown by our friend Alex Braden on Baseball's Dead. He did a whole like thirty minutes on beekeeping, and I'm all, what? Not? I'm sorry, I wasn't aware. That it was so intense. So intense. Yeah. Yeah, it's very serious. My husband has been fascinated with it from time to time. Just he's very like fascinated by nature and animals and watches the National Geographic channel. My dad does too. And my brother. Man, they just are nerds. And so I feel like I know a little bit more about it because they've all been fascinated with it or seen some cool documentary on it from time to time. And my husband actually wants to have bees someday. Uh He also wants to have chickens, and I actually think I would rather let him have bees than chickens because I'm so afraid of birds. So wait to see. I'm I, if I ever have bees, I'll let you know, and, and we can do some live streaming content, bee content. Okay, so you could be you and Dallas Braden could be apiarist. Apiarist. Yeah. A- 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 I feel like I'm putting a, an extra syllable in that. A- I don't know. If you guys know how to pronounce <laughs> beekeeping beekeepers, and you know what word I'm trying to say, please put it in the comments because I feel like I'm putting an extra syllable in that. Anyhow, but yeah, no, he said that basically if you just don't act a fool and you just go in, chill, they'll leave you alone. They like won't, yeah. they won't sting you animal. I don't think I'm going to test that theory out. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's the thing that I'm willing to do. But the beekeeper, the bee exterminator, I don't even want to call him the I don't think he it was technically a beekeeper. I do think that was his title. He, so he works for the actual pest control company that chase field oh okay like, so chase field has like a pest company that they <laughs> so it was literally random by that they were like look up the closest beekeeper yeah so the oh, funny God. thing is though the I find his name like head groundskeeper guy or whatever person that is in charge of finding this said that they actually called like somebody else just to see if it if they were gonna be closer so their first call was to their actual like pest company. And the guy that is, does the bees was in Surprise, Arizona at his kid's t-ball game. Yeah. And so it was like a 45 minute drive. Okay. And so then he, they called somebody else to see if there was any, anybody closer. And there wasn't. And they're like, well, we're, we're just going to wait for this guy. Shout out that guy though, because he just ate that limelight just all the way up. Matt Hilton is his name. I, I'm so sorry if you can hear my dog's squeaky toy. She apparently really wants to be a part of this conversation. She does. She yeah. wants to tell us about Matt. Uh, Matt she, yeah, she actually, it's funny because I was thinking about her as we started talking about bees too, because she likes to try to eat bees if they're oh. like in the backyard. And she actually, she huh. got one once and it like stung her on her, her lip. And yeah, so she must be having all- like PTSD right now, actually. Since we're talking yeah. About bees. But yeah, he, I, how much more fun was that? Because Matt Hilton, the beekeeper, was such a showman about yeah. it and it, it just it made it pure entertainment right going up on the list and and then he got to throw out the first pitch yeah. and i'm like i if someone made 
like a mashup of his drive out, like with some super awesome music. And I wasn't aware that this is what I needed in my life right now as a pick me up. But here we are. Right. Here we are. So in case you also need a pick me up, I'll put it in show notes. It's yeah. This is the kind of content that will save Major League Baseball. Truly. Absolutely. Absolutely. What else will save Major League Baseball? Else, (laughs) What? Nike owning up to their shit and saying, oh, guess what, guys? We're going we're gonna to go back. We're going to go back to the, the uniforms that we fucked with, that we didn't need to fuck with, that we told you were the same. That's the thing I can't get over. Now, I need to go back and find those articles because I know we talked about it here where they literally said, no, we didn't do nothing. I don't know. What are you talking about? They're, these are not the droids that we are looking for. Like, motherfuckers, I have eyeballs. They, but apparently the only concession that they are saying about like the pants is a different zipper i'm all no one is talking about the fucking zipper people not a soul is talking about the motherfucking zipper okay that's not the problem with the pants now and the players have been more and more open about it and it is the pants specifically that i've heard more of them say are are very uncomfortable both just in the way that they fit and can't be specified to them but I assume I would be uncomfortable too if I knew that you could see through my drawers on live television. So yeah, yeah. that and the fact that all of the the teams with gray jerseys, yes, their grays within, do not now. I, within five minutes, you're it's just soaked. It's so you're all. I don't understand. It's eight it's April. How are you this drenched in your own sweat? I don't understand. And the grays don't match. They're like two different grays on the jersey and the pants. Super classy, super big league. We got these jerseys that on wish.com. But just never it like it. I don't know. I think it's important to bring attention to the fact that this kind of stuff happens all the time, whether it's like corporations or people running for office or even just people online that want to get clicks and stuff who I'm not saying everyone is not trustworthy, but you just got to look out for yourself and right. the content that you're consuming because gaslighting is happening everywhere. And especially big corporations will try to convince you yeah. of whatever they want you to believe and won't own up to things. And yep. man, it's just, it's frustrating. It's annoying. But like when you see with your eyes that there are two different grays on this uniform and with your eyes that you can see through pants, trust yourself. Don't right? listen, like, we didn't do nothing to the pants. What are you talking about? So are, they've been see through this entire time. Sir, I've been watching baseball since 2018. I guarantee you that I have not seen anyone's dick and balls. Until now, (laughs) until now. (laughs) But yeah, so this is. I think the term gaslighting can be is very like hot. It's like bad. It's overused. But this is it. If you did not understand what it is before, this is it. Gaslighting one hundred and one. Nike and the new uniforms. Absolutely. Uh, Yeah. So apparently they will go back to the old uniforms and with the embroidered letters. And apparently they were like, oh, just kidding. We were trying to innovate something that didn't need to be innovated because at no point was anyone saying, none of the baseball players were saying, you know what would be nice? Smaller letters for my name. And it's thinner material because you get a little hot. Like no one was saying, that's that's not a thing that they were saying people. Okay, that's so good on you, Nike. Hopefully it doesn't take until 2025, which apparently that's what they were alluding to. And I'm like, yeah. It sounds like it's going to. I'm like, really? You, we got to wait a whole season for you. You don't have a stock of old jerseys somewhere else that you could be like, oh, let's let's pull these. Like, or what, what is we do? like high enough on your priority list providing uniforms for Major League Baseball? I don't know. No. But yeah, I hope uh, everyone refuses to buy the jerseys that they are out there trying to sell to. Four hundred dollars. Not only they're they, they're insanely expensive, but they're. Did you? I went when we were at Wrigley a week or so ago. I went in and was like feeling them and looking at them, and I just could not believe like the lack of quality. It it was not it was big on them. It's yeah. So. Something I will try and spend my money on though are the new City Connects from Tampa Bay. Yes. But only from Tampa Bay, because there have been other releases since we've recorded. Mm-hmm. And I don't like any of them. Which other Most ones? Detroit came, Detroit came out today. Detroit came out today. I'm not thrilled with them. I don't hate them. Yeah, I don't love them, though. Yeah. Silly. Gross. Oh, yeah. Absolutely not. That. And I like them even less now that I saw them on people, because I legitimately thought I was watching Seattle Mariners for a hot second before I realized who the fuck was playing them all. I thought it was silly that I- I'm going to turn on the movie game. Oh, JK. It's their damn City Connect uniforms. I was so mad. I was so mad. I was like, 
rain in March. And for a, a literal split second in my head, I'm all, Brandon, Brandon Marsh should get traded. Like, I didn't miss a trade. No, it's the fucking Philly City Connect, and I don't like them. But the Tampa Bay, Ray, fire me all the way up, inject it into my motherfucking veins, all of the things, people, because whoever designed these things, fucking fascinating them all. Yeah. Oh my God. Like, the sky bridge into the Ray. Yeah. Sick. I need a hat of that. I need a hat of that. And I need the little, I need the little skateboarding Ray. I don't even like skateboards. Yes. I will. So, I you will. know, Evan Longoria was, I learned this because my episode that I'm putting out tomorrow, I am featuring the Tampa Bay Rays. So it was very timely. And Liz, who I interviewed, a Tampa Bay Rays fan, she was wearing the, the City Connect hat and the shirt with the Ray on the skateboard, uh-huh. which she had to go to the stadium to get because it's like selling out so quickly for places. And Evan Longoria is one of the only like real franchise players for the Rays. And obviously he was traded away a while ago, but they have the, the Rays fans have nicknamed the Ray on the skateboard. She was telling me they have nicknamed him Evan Longboardia, which I think uh, is very That's adorable. I love that. Inside I love that. from Rays fans. Oh my goodness. Yeah. If you guys have not seen the Tampa Bay Rays, City Connect jerseys and that you need to go look, you need to go look and you need to find them. I will put a link in the show notes to them. But they also glow in the dark. The neon highlights glow in the I dark. I didn't know that. That's even cooler. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. All And I was like, oh, my God. I need it. I need it all. And it makes me like the, the Tampa Bay Rays even more. And slightly forgive Yandy Diaz for being a shit baseball player right now. But because he looks so sick. And yeah. Just, oh, I love them so much. I love them so much. The deep, like, the... Tr- Detroit Tigers ones, I'm all. They kind of. I see what you're doing. Yeah, I see what you're doing. I don't, but I feel like they went like 45 percent, and then they're all okay. Cool, we're done. I'm all. That is a really yeah. good way to put it. Yes, I can't pinpoint what like is underwhelming about them, but uh, yeah, that's I would agree. They're just underwhelming, and the hat is one one of my Twitter followers who is also a Cardinals fan. I thought he said it very well that the hat was giving him like the great britain wbc vibes and I'm like yeah that's totally it's just yeah what are we doing here it, just doing something cool with the d that they already have uh-huh. would have been doing something cool with the d would have been better than the most people great. like it when they Smart. do cool things with the D. so <laughs> that's, that's what i hear anyways but yeah i just and when they came out i'm all are these the city connects like really Something totally just beeped. Whatever else beeped in my room also agrees that they are very underwhelmed with the Detroit Tigers City Connects. But I want to, but who had on their bingo card the Tampa Bay Rays City Connects literally joining all of baseball Twitter? Like it is the one thing that baseball Twitter can agree on. It does. That's what we needed. You know what else we need though? I need owners to just get out the fucking way. What are we doing here? Just give us a checkbook. Just, just hand us a check. Just, just go away. Because Miami Marlins fans, I'm very sorry. It's over. Sorry. Yeah, you are not going to have a good franchise for a few years. A few years. Kim Ang tried. Kim Ang tried, and and I think fucked up their plans for more. Yeah, it seems like it because she did pretty damn well, and they were like, "Wait a second, wait yeah. a second, hold on." Hold on. We were trying to get, we were trying to tank so that we could get yeah. the, the, the spot. So what are you doing? And she said, hey, guess what? The the pieces that we got are pretty good. We should maybe go and try and win something. No. No. But Our vibes are too high and now they're just selling them off. Yeah. Peter Bendix on May 5th, May 4th. When did that trade actually? May 4th, I think. Yeah. May 4th? Okay. Said that the, the Miami Marlins were unlikely to make the playoffs. On May 4th, sir? I understand. But for the rest of that team, is that just a punch in the dick? I don't even have a dick, and I'm pretty sure that's what it is. That gut-wrenching feeling of, wow, we, there's no hope. There's no hope. And so now I'm like, are the rest of those players on those teams, are they going to leg out a single? Are they going to? Yeah, the most they can really do is try to increase their trade value so that they could potentially get traded to a contender. Because that's what they're going to do with anyone who's worth it. The only people that are Miami, if, if you're a player on the Miami Marlins, 
somehow come across this, I need you to just shut your ears. I live no harm. I'm, I'm so sorry about this. What are, oh, who? Jake Berger, maybe? Jake Berger. Jake yeah. Berger no, and saying, Tim Anderson. Is, is he, though? I don't think he's, I don't think he's up to his stock that much. No, I, it, it really just depends on, it would have to be circumstantial. Yeah, what his value could be at this point. I honestly think that it's the only, oh my God, when I say that I didn't think that Tim Anderson's stats were this bad. Holy fucking shit. Oh, no. In, a hun- in 110 at-bats, Kelsey, he has 24 hits. His batting average is 218. He has nine runs. He has six RBIs. His OBP is 259 with a slug of 245. His OPS plus is a 45, Kelsey. Okay. Uh, 45. Oh, sorry, I haven't been keeping up with the Marlins because I definitely did not expect that. Oh my God. I, wow. Bummer. Oh. Yeah. Golly. Team Anderson. Didn't he win? What, didn't he win a. He won the, bat, won the batting title. Yeah. Like, like in 2019. Or... Yeah. It wasn't okay. that long ago. It might have even been more recent than that. Yeah. He won the batting title. I was like, I'm like, wait, hold on. In 2020, he, 2019, he won the batting title. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. He was an all-star in 21 and 22. Wow. Boy, Tim Anderson. Okay, so what I was saying before this just totally threw me for a loop because I was not aware that Tim Anderson was this not good is their team is basically built on pitching. Right. It's, that's the only thing that they have that that is tradable at this point. And most of those arms are on the IL and there are some issues. So I don't know what we're doing, but Luis Rise goes to the Padres and then immediately has a four hit game for the Padres. And the players that they got, he got back for that trade though. So if you were listening to Peter Bendix's statement on why he traded Luis Arise, as early as he did, was basically saying that Luis Arise's stock is as high as it's ever going to get. And essentially, if you held on to him, he's just going to lose value. I was like, wow. Okay. Cool. So cool. Luis Arise got traded um, five minutes before they were supposed to play the Oakland A's. Yeah. When and he was in the lineup and got scratched. Yeah. And then just sat in the dugout and watched the game. Yeah. I was like, wow, okay, that's, I understand that as a business, but Jesus. So also, though, I'm sorry that I am a 12-year-old boy. The people that they got back for, Luis Rise, Wusak Go, and there was Dylan Head. Come on, stop it right now. Really? I saw a tweet about that, and I thought of you. Most... Never mind. I'm going to I'm going to be good. Marlon fans. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Marlon fans. I don't know. I don't know what you watch. From this, you do you just watch and just punch air? You're like, all right, well, and then their only viable arm that's there is in AAA because they're like, we want to preserve his arm. Yeah, it's very hard to even see what their big picture plan is because honestly it almost seems like what they are doing with their young pitching is just like breeding them to the point that they can trade them and get high value for them and but not ever be good yeah so even well, that, i don't think there's like a clear track of he the owner of the marlins essentially wants to be the Rays, so hence why he hired peter yeah, Bennett, obviously and mm-hmm. was just like make us the new Rays," and i'm all okay but you understand that you have to build up the farm system and it's going to take quite a few years to build up a farm system. Mm-hmm. You can't yeah. just magically. So I don't know if he's computated all of that. And Kim Aang, do you think Kim Aang is just so sad, but also laughing? Yeah, Kim Aang was freed, fortunately. And now they need to free Skip Schumacher, which I, they more or less already have. And Jake Berger is the other one that I'm just like, let this man go. And Honestly, I don't know. There are things that I like about Jazz Chisholm as a player. I think if he can mature personally and I think he's fun and exciting to watch that he's another one that's just like, why keep him under a rock here in Miami at this point? 
So, yeah, I don't know. It's really a bummer because you don't want to see any team just completely go down in flames like that and have no excitement around them. And they already have a really hard time getting people in the seats there. Right. But. Yeah, I don't know, because I think you're definitely onto something with these Bruce Sherman is being very short sighted in the sense of thinking that you can just the reason the Rays are the Rays is because like they had Joe Madden in there for decades. Now they've had Kevin Cash in there for decades like it is they are playing the long game Mm -hmm. and it's working. It's different. It is very different than what a lot of other teams do, but. It's the Marlins are like they would literally have to there. They have they will have to start from scratch and yeah. Bruce Sherman will probably not be alive by the time that ever comes around. So I'm not really sure what his idea of what he would like to see happen is. And it's unfortunate that all we can do is speculate. Yeah, I, it's very confusing to me. And I'm all, oh, OK, sure. Marlins fans, are you strictly a Marlins fan? Do you watch other baseball? Are you fans of other teams? Let me know in the comments. I actually do want to know. Because that's I'm I'm preparing myself. I'm not saying that the Astros are going to be that level, but eventually, eventually, I do think that both of those Florida teams would have a lot stronger fan base. They're young, younger franchises, but they would have much stronger fan bases if they had owners that were committed to being there and really wanted to be there. And Tampa mm-hmm. Bay is fortunately taking more of that route now, and I do believe that they that will pay dividends for the the fans that they end up right. bringing in and attendance hopefully will reflect that sooner rather than later. But the, the Marlins are almost like, I don't think they've ever really been better off in terms of attendance overall than the Rays. Yeah. And it's really sad because I think that they could have so much success. Miami is an amazing city and it's very unique and it's got its challenges in terms of like specifically for baseball. But the biggest challenge is that they have yet to have an owner who like really just wants to commit to being there. And right success it's yep. so screwed up yeah it's i'm shocked like really truly but i i don't know why i'm shocked yeah you, know, you see what john fisher has done with the oakland a's for i don't know how long now 20 no 20 years not 20 years because they were good at that point in time but since i started watching with the 2018 i think was like the last really good team mm-hmm. was marcus simeon and the mats matt olson matt chapman yeah. It wasn't that long ago that the A's actually were competitive. And now you're just, and now I'm looking up the A's because the, their back end of the bullpen is amazing. And who would have thought that I was going to say that in the year? I don't know. But yeah, it's one of those things where you're like, how? Oh, okay. So as an owner, I can't vote you out because then when I need shit, you're not going to vote my way. So mm-hmm. I guess I can't, you know, rock the boat. You all suck. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Well, that sucks. Who? There's so many things you could say right now. I'm not oh, really right? sure. Like, where, where, where am I going with this? Where am I going with it? The Chicago White Sox. Yeah. <laughs> At, do Chicago they? White. I don't know. I take that back. They are less sucky because Tommy Pham is there and Tommy Pham is whipping those motherfuckers into shape. Yes, he is. Tommy Pham says, y'all, I'm not a fucking loser. Y'all can't be losers either. So I'm going to need you to get right. Let's do this. And they're doing the damn thing because did they sweep it? They didn't sweep it. No, they took two out of three. Okay. Oh, but they did sweep the race. Yeah, they did sweep the race. Even taking two out of three from the Cardinals, they have won 25% of their games against the Cardinals. That's how few wins they have in that just the past couple of days. They have won 25% of their games this season against the Cardinals. Yeah. Eight wins total, but they're almost double digits now. Any day now, maybe. I just watched Tommy Pham park a two-run home run in in the Rays stadium. I am pretty sure the Rays are actually beating them because... Are um, they playing the Rays again? Oh, yeah, they yeah. are. Oh, yeah. Eight to two. Eight to two, the Rays beat them. Yeah. Tommy Pham, literally the only thing, the only offense that the White Sox had. But I take that back. The White Sox are less sucky. Colorado Rockies are there. The Astros and the Angels, we are, we are tied for last place. We are tied for last place in the AL West because you that's are. what I had on my big old card. Wait, but all the teams within that AL West division are still within seven games of each other, whereas like the Rockies and the Marlins are like 14 plus games out already. So that's I'm holding on to that too, Susie, because the Cardinals are also in last place, but they're still only five and a half games back. So it's very different. I'm not saying that the Cardinals and the Astros are like going to be serious playoff contenders. The, Car- I the Cardinals are at least in a better spot than the Astros, but 
not by enough that I should say, take them, time to take them seriously. No, but the divisions are still very tight. Whereas the other divisions, there, there's certainly teams that so let's not lump ourselves with the White Sox and the Rockies just yet. That's okay. I'm still holding out hope that Tommy Pham will come to the Astros and whip people in shape. He is really, he's one of those that's going to be really fun to see where he ends up because he's going to, he's going to go somewhere and maybe sooner rather than later. Now that the Marlins have opened the floodgates, do you think it is just like a drop in the bucket of the selling bucket? Or do you think this opens the floodgates for other teams that are just straight up not going to contend to start making shit happen? I don't know, honestly, because I'm sitting here looking at underperforming teams that are supposed to be performing. Thinking, okay, so are we are we wait are we going to wait around and see if what we have gets better, or are we going to be proactive about it now? And I see both sides of the coin, and I don't know which side of the coin I'm more comfortable with, honestly. Yeah, because Tom had tagged me in something on Twitter that basically said that legitimately all of those White Sox players are going to be on the trading block, and so I'm all I don't know if I want any of those White Sox pitchers as it is now on the team except for apparently Eric Betty who has just put on a master class but they're the White Sox minor league teams apparently their farm system they I want to say they have like five top 20 prospects or something yeah, yeah they got some oh, guys and they are notorious for their it's sad for their fans because their fans like know they can't get excited about them because they're gonna get traded away more than likely before they get brought up at this point or I don't know. They've just, they do have some talent there, but they're not yeah. managing them the best. So yeah, maybe take your pick from the White Sox farm system. Let's hope. I saw something funny because I was, I can't stand the Tampa Bay Rays home broadcast. So I was watching the White Sox broadcast or I was listening to the White Sox broadcast and they were talking about, they were doing a giveaway of a quarter zip pullover and the first 20,000 fans in the White Sox stadium would get this pullover and I'm all do, do y'all 20,000 really so you're gonna have 19,403 left over what are you gonna do with that are there going to be children in I was I'm gonna go into my office tomorrow and they're gonna be like everybody take a <laughs> take a look quarter zip yeah <laughs> courtesy of the White Sox seriously I, I'm like 20,000 y'all didn't I don't know do some sort of head count and be like guys we only have 5,000 season ticket holders maybe we should rethink the 20,000 quarter zips and and someone said no we're we're 20,000 that's a good number okay all right cool so I it it just it made me laugh it really made me laugh because the Astros whenever they do like a giveaway it's first 10,000 first 10,000 in the stadium I don't know oh yeah it's routinely 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 30 plus thousand people in there I'm all yeah if you don't get there two hours before you ain't getting shit yeah so I'm like, cool. I didn't even want that bobblehead. That's that's fine. I don't. Yeah, buy the kind of bobblehead. We do. I think first twenty thousand. Sometimes even first thirty thousand. If it's especially if it's like a, a kids thing or some mm-hmm. something that's not just for adults that like everybody would want. But people do. They get there. They'll get in line and go in and make sure they get it. And they'll even come out afterwards, just like if they didn't want to stay in the yeah. stadium all the time. But people are serious about those giveaways. Not so much a guaranteed rate these days, though. Much. But let's talk about the standings. Let's talk about the standings because there's some things that I'm all like we drew it up. Like we definitely drew it up in the off season, right? Mm. Because everybody had the uh, the Cubs on top. Yeah, I certainly did. You know what? I actually did think the Cubs were going to be more competitive this year, but I also thought they would do more in the off season. That would have made me feel that way. So yeah, they are playing more competitively than I thought they would with how their roster was set at the beginning of the season, and they have a lot of injuries too. And guys who aren't even playing right now, which is scary as an NL Central fan. They're tied atop the NL Central with the Brewers, who have played just a couple games less than they have. The Cubs are at 21 and 14. This was before coming into play today. So they're currently playing the Padres. I think they're losing. Not really sure how that's going at the moment. But yeah, they're 21 and 14 and the Brewers are 20 and 13. Reds are close behind those 16 and 18. Pirates at 16 and 19. And then the Cardinals are 15 and 19 but again like i said tightest division overall all the teams are still within five and a half games from each other and this early on we're like barely 20 percent through the season if that's too soon to get too far into it 
I want to talk about the Phillies, though, in the NL East because they are currently the best team in baseball with a 24 and 11 record. Are Braves fans like losing their minds right now because the Braves are in second at 20 and 12? I think the Braves and Dodger fans are losing their minds because at no point in time did they think Philly was going to enter the conversation. It was just Bra- Braves and Dodgers, just Braves and Dodgers. And they're right. like, yeah, Philly, sure, you're. Really, you're going to do it? And then Philly just said, Shh, keep underestimating us. Keep underestimating I heard, I heard some speculation that the Phillies have had an easy schedule so far. And so I'm just taking a peek at it here. But, you know, they played the Braves. They played the Dodgers. They played the Giants, who are not terrible. Dodgers, they, or the Giants are terrible. I say that as an Astros fan. Yeah, they play the Cardinals, they play the Nats. The point is, yeah, outside of the Braves and the Dodgers, all the other teams that they've played are currently playing under 500. So that is something to take into consideration. That being said, they have already played the Braves and the Dodgers as well. So I don't think it's like totally unbalanced. Yeah. But I also want to say, though, that Braves fans are also losing their minds because some of their players are underperforming, not to the level of... Yeah, where they need to be. And the fact that the Dodgers swept the Braves this week, last yeah. week, mm-hmm. this is what yeah. by not just a little, little bit. It was not close games, not super competitive games. And I, Braves fans, if you are here in the chat, please let me know. Are you worried about Matt Olson? Are you worried about Ronald Acuna Jr.? Does Austin Riley get going at some point in time? Like what, what's happening? Because I was expecting bigger things. From Matt Olson. Oh, they, yeah, Braves fans definitely were too. And it's interesting because their pitching seems to be the thing that has, that we've seen fall short in the postseason. Right. So they definitely invested more in trying to have more fail safes for that and just being loaded up there. And all things considered, like the pitching is working for them. That's not the, and you say that's not the problem. They're playing 20 and 12 ball. Like they're going to be fine. But uh, yeah, Marcel yeah, Zuna is, that, is standing on his head. Yeah. But, like, Matt Olson has three home runs. Three. Matt Olson. What, what, what are we doing here? He has a slug of 359. Matt Olson, I need you to, I need you to get going. Does, is he a slow starter, people? I don't know. I think he could be, or he has been a little bit, but not, like, to this extent. It's getting Austin a Riley also has Riley. three home runs with a slug of 397. This season. Again, Braves fans are losing their minds with a super stun- stunning winning record. Austin Riley and Matt Olson both have average OPS pluses. Literally, Austin Riley is at 100 and Matt Olson is at, at 92. So I, I'm going to need you guys to get going. I say that the Braves are doing this without three of their key players doing all of the things because they yeah. got Travis Garneau fucking standing on his head and hitting three home runs. And Sean Murphy is still out. When is Sean Murphy coming back? He is supposed to be back this week. So, yeah, I think in the next, by May 8th, maybe, or May 10th. I can't remember. He's definitely coming back this week, though. So that's good. I think that's in our... Yeah, Sean Murphy should return from oblique injury for the Braves this week. That will be good for them. Just an overall kind of vibes glue guy the thing as well. But, yeah, the good news is not that this isn't to be expected. But the other teams in the NL East are the Nats, who are holding steady at 500, which is honestly good for them. 17-17. Mets are close behind in fourth, 16-18. and 18. It looks like they're about to be 17-18, and 18, but wait to see. The Cardinals still have three outs, and the Marlins are, as we talked about, are already sellers long before the deadline at 10-26. and 26. But yeah, of course, Braves fans have very high expectations, as they should. But it's what I think is going to be most interesting, because we know the Phillies and the Braves are going to be at, at the top of that division. Do you think the... The Phillies like really stand a chance at ultimately taking the division from the Braves, or is it just the way that it's playing out kind of schedule based right now? Honestly, maybe they do because the Phillies pitching has come on and been a really big surprise because Ranger Suarez. Yeah. I'm I'm sorry, I wasn't familiar with your game. I had him on my radar a little bit from the postseason last season, but nothing to this extent. Also, Christopher Sanchez is doing things. Turnbull, Spencer Turnbull came on. Yeah. And then like 
Taiwan Walker's like, oh, hey, uh, you paid me a bunch of money. I got to go back in the rotation now. And Spencer Triple's like, you don't see me. So, like, their bullpen has gotten even stronger now than, like, Reynaldo Lopez for the Braves has come on and done wonderful things. So, Chris Sale is looking like like vintage Chris Sale as well. Yeah, he is. I, so I don't know, maybe, maybe the Phillies do have some of that Philly boy magic. They stole the Cardinals devil magic a couple of years ago. So yeah, no, I think they still have it because they still have it. Okay. And okay. I don't know. I, I think the overall thought amongst baseball fans is that the Braves are just like so much better than the Phillies. But I agree with you. I don't think that is true, like even on paper. So yeah. I think it, it, there's well, no reason. Who has, division right. who has the second most home runs on the Braves? Kills. Certainly not who I would think it is. Travis Darno. Travis Darno has five home runs. That's what Alex Anthopoulos has just got to load all those weirdos in there. You never do know. Travis Darno has five. Matt Olson, Austin Riley, and Michael Harris, the second, all have three. Ozzy Albies, Orlando Arcia, Ronald Acuna Jr., Adam Duvall have two. That's crazy. I, I don't understand what's happening with that. Like, that, that is just, that is absolutely insane. Yeah, this is going to be a really fun that what you just read right now, like the Braves home run leaders is going to be a fun one to look back at, like at the all-star break. And yeah, because I would assume one would assume it will look wildly different, but you never let's know. hope because if I have to drag Matt Olson's fucking app in my fantasy lineup every fucking week, I'm getting tired of him. I know I'm, getting, I'm right there with you. I got him too. And I was really happy about it and I can't let him go, but I like need to let him go. Yeah. yeah. Like tonight. And everyone's like, oh, you got to keep him. He's going to lock back in. When is he going to lock back in? Anytime? Well, love that. But yeah, the Brewers are the ones that I was very shocked. And I, yeah. I think we talked about it as well. But obviously, the Dodgers are doing Dodger things because they're the Dodgers. Can we talk about Andy Pajas for just a few seconds? We can, because I actually think it's funny that he's not getting more national media attention. I need people to understand. Like, Andy Pajas just came on the scene and was all, oh, I can do things. I can do things because, you know, the rest of the outfield or the Dodgers not doing the things. And uh, Andy Paw has got called out a couple of weeks ago and currently has in 69 at bats, 22 hits, four home runs. His slash line is a 319, 319 batting average with a 338 OBP. And a 565 slug. That is good for a 903 OPS. Remember, people, one dot. One dots are like very good. And he is a 903 for an OPS plus of 153. Park adjusted. Okay. So again, 100 for the OPS plus is average. So he's 53% better than your average baseball player. Andy Paul Hitz. Yeah. And he's, already enough. he's had enough at bats now for that to like to be able to take stock in that and I gotta assume to some extent it's because he's on a team with Wookie Betts and Shohei Otani that he's not getting more attention but yeah the bottom of that Dodgers lineup is doing it and it's in big part thanks to him so yeah shout out Andy Pajas because he is doing the damn thing they said hold my beer let me get some out more production from the outfield and Andy Pajas welcome to the show because they came up. <laughs> I do think that this NL West division is going to tighten up overall. I hope it does because the Padres are, I think, playing up to par of what I expected anyway. They're at about 500. They were 18 and 19 coming into today. They look did fine. John Lustros just go on the aisle? Oh, did he? I keep I'm gonna miss that. You, you keep talking. I will look. I don't know. I'm not like. I'm not like overly high on them, but I absolutely, I still feel very confident that they're going to have better results than they did last year, which again, on paper is not necessarily what anyone would have thought. The Diamondbacks and the Giants are tied for third, both at 15 and 20. And the D-backs is what I'm really bummed about there because we are bandwagon D-backs fans here. I wouldn't even say bandwagon because I feel like we were high on them before they actually went on their playoff run. But yeah, they're very much like a, a second team close in our hearts here. And I haven't been playing close enough attention to know exactly what's going wrong for them. They're definitely losing late the bullpen. Games. The bullpen is, yeah, is not super. Runners in scoring position. Ah, yes. They're leaving runners in scoring position. That is a thing 
that actually you should not do if you want to win baseball games. So yeah. Diamondbacks, I'm glad we figured that out together. The Rockies, of course, are in the gutter as one of the worst two teams in baseball at eight and 26. So we don't really need to talk about them. But yeah, I do anticipate, I don't know. I think the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks are going to be closer when it comes down to it. But I wouldn't count the Padres out. And once again, I wish I could say the same about the Giants, but I'm like, I'm just not like that excited about them for any reason in particular. I don't know if the Diamondbacks are going to figure it out. I really don't. I want them to. I want them to because, again, I've been screaming Diamondbacks from the top of mountain for two seasons now. And I don't know if the answer back are still there. there. I don't know. I think that the the bullpen has blown them. We'll And Philip Melo has been out. Alex Donald has been out. Not saying that these two are magical offensive pieces for them. But I think Jerry P is that glue guy, that like straw that stirs the drink. Mm-hmm. And, but they're, the Diamondbacks problem is they're either scoring 15 yes. or one. Like then you're not getting either. And it's one of those things where you're like, cool. I'm so glad that you could score 15 in, in this game. Can you save a little for the other games? No. Um, yes, Joe Musgrove is... On the 15-day IL with a right elbow inflammation. I don't know who they called up. Oh, Randy Vasquez. There we go. There we go. The course line. Yeah, the Padres challenge is definitely going to be like, can their pitching, specifically their starting pitching, even their bullpen, so can that be the thing that goes the distance to keep them anywhere near contention? And I don't know, maybe it'll be for the Diamondbacks too. We did mention... Alec Thomas is expected to return for the Diamondbacks this week. Paul Seawald, their closer, who has not played at all yet this season, is also expected to return this week. So that could be really big for them. But Merrill Kelly put on the 60-day IL. They have acquired Matt Bowman from the Twins for cash. Is he going to slot in to their rotation? No idea. And I want to say that Eduardo Rodriguez got, I don't want to say held back, but there was a tiny hiccup in here. Yeah, not great. So... They've got the young guys up there, again, trying to fill in innings. Bren fought okay. Slate Ciccone was okay for three innings, and then he just got shelled. Tommy Henry was up there. So it's just, it's like the Astros plug and play. So hopefully they can get it going as well. But the Astros and the Diamondbacks seasons have mirrored each other, although they don't have a lockdown bullpen that was supposed to be the envy of all bullpens. So hopefully they figure it out because I really want them to go. Corbin Carroll has not been the... Yeah. If you just saw Corbin Carroll this season, you would not look at him and say that was the NL rookie of the year. That's not... He's not playing like that. And I want to say that he did a pretty in-depth interview about Mm -hmm. what's going on with his swing. And he's saying that his swing is too flat. And so it's not creating enough angle in a multi. That's, that sounds like a lot of geometry. Sorry. And I don't, yeah, maybe, like maybe we're thinking a little too far into it. Yeah. I don't know. That's got to be one of the more challenging things with guys who are just like in a funk or like something is off to finding that balance between like just trying to go out there and find what you already had and then overanalyzing it. So yeah. I, I that was my takeaway from that interview too was like, okay, are we maybe, I don't know if this head game is helping anybody. But yeah, so I, Hopefully he he figures it out. Some people have said, are you sure he's not hurt? Are you sure? Because there was a shoulder injury last season. And literally from like then on, it seemed to have zapped his power. And so when we say Corbin Carroll has not been Corbin Carroll, I legitimately mean Corbin Carroll has a 60 OPS plus. At, with 120 ABs, he has 26 hits, one home run, a 203 batting average. He's stolen eight bases, but a slug of 240, excuse me, 250. So oh. there, there have been underperformers. We're going we're, to, we're going to do a segment called underperformers. We need to get it going. We should, because there are, it is weird. I'm sure this happens every season and it's just because, I don't know. It feels like there are more like big name underperformers than usual. So let's do yeah. that next week because I think there's at least, there's at least like three in every division right now yeah. that we easily 
pick out, if not multiple on each team. Yeah, that's weird. Let's yeah. do some research. We're going to pull it out for you. We're going to pull the hard numbers. Hey now. Hey now. What are we pulling out? Girls, come on now. So I was going to say this is the hard D, the hard data. Right. Our summer sausages are not coming on. Okay. Just so you know. But the Guardians, I did not have the Guardians doing this. Did no. not have the Guardians doing this. The Guardians are sitting atop the AL Central at 22 and 12. They're actually 23 and 12 now. They just beat the Tigers. Oh, good. Not good. I, Stephen Kwan went on the IL as well. And Stephen Kwan has been that annoying mosquito slap hitter guy that you're mm -hmm. like, can you just, can you not do the things? I want him not to do the thing. I want him to do the, to do the things because like hashtag Asian togetherness. I, we need more Asian baseball players that are not Shohei Otani. Okay. Those are typical Asian guys. So I need Stephen Kwan to just play out of his head, but just like, not against the Astros. Okay. But yeah, Stephen Kwan is hurt. But that I don't understand how they're doing it with a wing and a prayer and Tristan McKenzie with half a fucking UCL. Shane Bieber out. Tanner Bidey getting lit the fuck up and I'm all... Who's pitching for you? But still not over here. Magical. What's going on? So, I don't know. I guess Guardians. We'll see what happens to you. Yeah. And they just Stephen Kwan got sent to the IL. They're bringing up Kyle Manzardo, who apparently is more of a power hitter than Stephen Kwan, That's but still very good bat to ball skills. So he's Stephen Kwan, but with power. Well, that's not fair. That's not fair. Why do you have why do you have Stephen Kwan but with power? That's we don't like that. I'm excited to see what he does though. Yeah, they got those Stephen Boat vibes. It's working for him. And the twins did pick up some steam, as you mentioned. They had that 12 game winning streak, which is good for second right now at 19 and 14. The Kansas City Royals still holding strong, close behind in third at 20 and 15. They're actually like technically not really. It's, the standings are also off a little bit right now because certain teams have played more than others. Right. So the Royals are technically behind, but they have won more games than the Twins, at least coming into today, Monday, May 6th. Tigers staying competitive there in fourth, above 500 at 18 and 17 at end of play today. And the lowly Chicago White Sox sit with the Rockies for the worst record in baseball at 8 and 26. We already talked about that. But yeah, again, it's interesting because, again, that Central Division is still outside of the White Sox, still pretty tight. But then yeah. we go to the AL East where you've got the Orioles to nobody's surprise, who are high on vibes and all of the stats, 23 and 11, just one game ahead of the Yankees, 23 and 13. Red Sox, sorry, Red Sox. We still, we do, we owe you an apology. We'll keep apologizing until yeah, we don't have to. We'll see. Yep. Uh, they are hanging tough in third at 19 and 16, along with the Tampa Bay Rays, who are just under 500. They're actually falling a little more under 500 because they did. Oh, no, they won today. So actually, they're right at 500. They're 18 and 18 because they beat the White Sox. Thank you. Goodness. The Blue Jays also just a game back in last at 16 and 19. So everybody's super close there, super competitive East Division, of course. Do you think the, I don't want to say the outlier, but I don't know. Like, I'm still not totally sold on the Yankees being one of the top two teams in this division. What do you think? I don't know if, I don't know if the pitching can stay on this thing that they're doing. And, when we talk about underperformers, Aaron Judge, I'm looking at you. Oh, I don't know. I don't. Is is Marcus Stroman going to continue this? Is Carlos Carlos Rodon just had a I don't want to say blow up start, but give up four earned runs in his last start. Is he going to stay the way that he is? Mr. Cortez is always a little Cortezy. <laughs> um, yeah i just don't think there's you're saying there's not enough consistency there to be comfortable that the these results will continue yeah. exactly that's exactly why i asked i don't and i don't know i just are they going to continue to keep barking in the dugout is that what's doing it for him right now maybe it's literally like juan soto and alex rodigo yeah bro out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right and then oswaldo cabrera coming on and doing the things Anthony Volpe kind of doing, stepping up, but Big G, where are you at, sir? Just getting thrown out of games. Shane, <laughs> you want that as an example to the rest of the team? Come on now. I'm just kidding. But that was hysterical. And I feel like there's been a rash of ump shows 
Oh, yeah. For oh, for sure. Yeah. And the funniest thing about that was, yeah, it, the guys on Foul Territory were talking about that today. And they seem to think that a big part of it was like the, the specific words that you use really hold a lot of weight with the umpires. And if you make it personal, you use the word you. Is what They were saying that oh, okay. you called them out specifically. Yeah. But that's what I'll get you tossed real quick, even if you don't necessarily get particularly heated about it. The most entertaining part of that for me was like how much taller Aaron Judge was than that umpire. And I was like, maybe he just likes to throw the tall guys out. I don't know. It seemed it was very funny because Aaron Judge is as composed as a, a highly competitive guy can be, I think. Right. And, but he still just was towering over him. You know, yeah. I wouldn't want to be the umpire right now. The I think I heard him say that this was definitely not the worst thing he's ever said to an umpire. And this was the thing that got it. And he, I guess he's the first captain to have been tossed since Don uh, Maddox. Uh, uh, and, it, and this was the first time he's ever been tossed. Like in his yeah. room, wow, Aaron Judge. Okay. I did know that. Yeah. Wow. But yeah, Giancarlo, Stanton, Big G over here with your 435 slug and your six home runs. I think they want a little bit more out of you, sir. I think they, they want a little bit more out of the, the big guys, Air Judge, looking at you, because he's warming up a little bit. Because the last time I looked, his OPS plus was definitely not in the triple digits. Yeah. It was lower. So seven, um, 20 RBIs, a 350 OBP, a 439 slug, good for a 789 OPS, or a 125 yeah. OPS plus. So again, we're getting, we're warming up. On the right side of average there. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're warming up. Good on you, Air Judge. Don't warm up fully until Astros leave town. Don't think. <laughs> Rizzo is also. Not playing with a concussion. That's that helpful. I, I imagine, yes. But the funny thing is about this team, though, I'm always a little shocked Like when I look at the various teams and what I perceive as the, as I, I, what I perceive as like things that are all, oh, like that should be that. When then I look at them, I'm all, I'm sorry, who now? What? Juan Soto leading the New York Yankees with eight home runs is definitely what I had on my bingo card. So it goes Juan Soto, Aaron Judge with seven. Anthony Rizzo was six, tied with Giancarlo Stanton. And then Oswaldo Cabrera and Alex Verdugo, both with four. So just, I don't know. Juan Soto is not on this team. How what much is different, happening? Yeah. How much different does this Yankees team look? Yeah. Yeah. The Cardinals have one player who has hit six home runs that has the most on the team. So I'm just... Uh... Having a hard time with that right now. But let's talk about the AL West just for a hot second because I am very interested to see that they are the only division that does not yet have, and this is, again, coming into today, so maybe we've got one now, but they do not have a 20-win team yet coming into Monday, May 6th. The Mariners, 19 and 15, are just half a game up on the Rangers, 19 and 16. Both are just ahead of, just as we wrote it up, the Oakland Athletics, 17 and 18. Unfortunately. These three teams are still eons ahead of the Astros and the Angels that, as you mentioned, are tied for last place at 12 and 22, all within seven games of each other. It's still anybody's game, anybody's division in the long run. Is it though? I just, I don't know. I don't know because everybody had Kyle Tucker leading the Astros with the most home runs, right? It's not shocking to me to say that Kyle Tucker has the most home runs on this team, but when Jordan Alvarez is also on your team, you're right. Like, Exactly. Same with the Cardinals. Did I think Wilson Contreras would be one of the top home run hitters on the team? Sure. But with Nolan Arenado and Paul Goldschmidt, didn't think he'd have the most. So I feel so, like um, Kyle Tucker leading, you know, the Astros with nine, standing on his head, willing the Astros to do fucking do anything. Jose Altuve also standing on his head, asking us to do anything whenever there's men on base. Don't ask Jose Altuve to do anything because that's mm -hmm. not what Jose Altuve, that's his thing. That's an interesting Jordan thing. Alvarez also has seven. So literally, Jose Altuve, the shortest man on the team, and Jordan Alvarez, the biggest man on our team, have the same amount of home runs because baseball. That Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. And then there is a far cry. There's a big drop. Yiner Diaz, Jeremy Pena, Jake Myers, and big John Singleton. We're going to... I gotta take a, I gotta take a break and I gotta we gotta talk about John Singleton. Yeah, we gotta talk about John Singleton. If you guys don't know, it's gonna tie in with Jose Abreu. 
getting sent down our first baseman that we signed for $58.5 million when we didn't have a GM has just been abysmal. Just the most bad baseball player that you could ever imagine. When I say that he had a negative OPS plus, I didn't realize that you could have a negative OPS plus, and yet here we are. So he had actually never played in the minors. So him accepting this minor league assignment is the first time he will ever be in the minors. So he goes to Florida Com- Pl- Complex League, excuse me, and John Singleton comes in. You guys don't know John Singleton's story. This man we signed, literally the Astros signed, back in 2014, 2015. He was essentially the biggest contract as a rookie that the Astros had ever given anybody. And unfortunately, due to some substance issues and things that are now allowed in the league, he got kicked out. He got kicked out. Comes back, goes and plays in like Mexico for a little while, mm-hmm. drains everything out, comes back, plays for the Brewers for nine games. games, gets DFA'd. Singleton comes back into the after system, was in the minor league system for a while, gets called up, and has basically ridden the bench. I think last season, he hit two home runs in the same game, <laughs> and then no home runs ever again. But he didn't get to play. Like, that's not... Dusty didn't believe in platooning, didn't... Jose Abreu was the guy. Jose Abreu was playing first. Yeah. Tom and I, who we do the Astros version of Birdman Baseball, have been beating the drum and saying, you know what, if John Singleton just got everyday run at first base, mm-hmm. he, would be a, he, would be, he wouldn't be a superstar. He wouldn't be a superstar. We don't need superstars. He would be a serviceable guy. And big John Singleton said, hold my fucking beer. Let's do this. And the thing about John Singleton is that he's very patient and he knows the strike zone very wow. well. So... Part of the, some, sometimes he will strike out looking because that ball is just so close. And you're like, you can't take that John Singleton, but it's like right there on the fucking line. And you're all, I love that you're, I love that you know the strike zone. Like, yeah. You know the strike zone. Big John Singleton, I need you to listen to the, the stat that John had during this last home stand because he did the damn thing. He did the damn thing and said, hey, Astros at you watch what i can do on this last homestand he averaged a 300 batting average with six hits three home runs eight rbis and five runs the last game that we unfortunately lost to the fucking mariners big john hit a fucking two run bomb and they just lit my soul on fire and i was so happy so happy so i am sincerely hoping that that he will get, he is pretty much essentially like the first baseman right now. Yeah. Joey Loperfito has been brought up as an outfielder. He is, that is typically his position. They've given him some run at first base, but not up here. So it's just been John. And they hope that it just stays John. So John Singleton, yeah, to you. We said. It's really cool to see him, especially after his, just the lengthiness of his story and, and kind of the ups and downs of it come back and i'm so glad i didn't know that they had given him a shot i knew you guys had been campaigning for it so that's awesome 30 32 year old john singleton and he as overall season has a 121 ops plus hell yeah so we love that love that but someone who i have to call out as an underperformer because killing me you're literally killing me and this fucking team Alexander David Bergman, where in the actual fuck are you? What's happening? What's happening? We all know. We all know that you're still sure. Okay, get it. But this is the worst start that he's had since 2016. When I say this is the worst start that he's had since 2016, can you just hazard a guess at what his OPS plus is? Kelsey, mm-hmm. just hazard it. It's got to be better than what Jose Abreu's was, right? Jose Abreu has a negative 20. He would have a better OPS plus, but Jose, <laughs> that's not saying much. Oh, gosh. I don't know his stats like regularly enough to hazard what would be an appropriate guess. What, what do you well, know? I'm saying if a 100 is your normal average yeah. baseball player. So he probably normally plays like OPS plus while over 100, like last season. Yeah. So what do you think his OPS plus is currently? Like 80? 
try a 63. 63. If you are not, if you are audio only and you are not on the YouTubes, I need you to go to your YouTubes and I need you to look at Kelsey's reaction <laughs> to me telling her Alex Bregman's OPS Plus of a 60 fucking three. Yikes. Now I got to look up and see what some of the and guys are. 134 plate appearances. He has six runs, 24 hits, five doubles, one home run, one home run, 11 RBIs, two stolen bases. This man runs like a fucking penguin. I don't understand how he has stolen bases. I don't know. 14 walks and 16 strikeouts. And I am giving him shit because normally he doesn't really, he doesn't really strike out. He normally walks a shit ton more. But he is known for his lengthy at-bats. Yeah, we are, seriously, we are going to have to dedicate an episode to underperformers because I'm looking at Paul Goldschmidt right now. And I, I just took a peek at Alex Bregman's OPS Plus from last season, which was 123 for the 2023 season. Paul Goldschmidt's was 120, and that was like a down year for him. And right now, Paul Goldschmidt's OPS Plus is 68. So just barely. What are hey. we doing? What What are we doing? I'm... I rate that this is part of this is part of the reason why we have we are leaving all of the runners in scoring position. This is part of the yeah, reason. Obviously. We have one more kind of a sad update that's not gonna make any baseball fan feel better. If you haven't heard by now, I don't know where you've been, but unfortunately Mike Trout is gonna be out for at least eight to twelve weeks. He has a torn meniscus. I have actually had a meniscus injury as a teenager, so this is something I am relatively familiar with. Obviously, I'm not a professional athlete. I actually mine was not did not have surgery on it because I was like still growing and stuff, but not great. And I don't know, just from what I know, very generally, I would be shocked if he is back in eight to 12 weeks. I don't know. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. Like, yeah, baseball yeah. is better when Mike Trout is on the team. Granted, that team is any Oh, so, yeah. But you can still watch him play baseball. And yeah. that just, that is, it is very sad that he's on the shelf. He's on the shelf. But do you think, do you think when, Mike Trout is talked about like in the later years. Do you think he is talked about as that like Ken Griffey Jr. type thing? Oh, he would like he was such a good player, but didn't stay healthy type thing. I fear that, yes, especially at this point. Like it it seems like it's inevitable, but I don't think that takes away from his legacy overall. They'll there will be the fans, especially depending on your age and like your generation of fandom, that is a big part of their idea of him. But I think the thing that is maybe the biggest bummer, other than it just sucks anytime we don't get to watch Mike Trout play baseball, especially the older and older that he gets, is that I never really thought that he was going to leave the Angels. But I think the national media and like baseball fans in general really want to see him leave the Angels for, for obvious reasons. And I think this just makes it seem like there's even less of a chance of that happening, of maybe ever seeing Mike Trout play playoff baseball. That, man, even just That's saying so that hurts me. That's so bad. Yeah. yeah. I guess we settle on the WBC. Yeah. It's not, it's not the, it's the same, but it's not the same. It's not. That is well, we do, let's end on a, a better note because we do yeah. have a lot of players that are back in action coming off the injured list this week. Uh, Walker Bueller is back for the Dodgers as of today. I think he Ooh. is probably playing baseball right now-ish. Yeah, check in on that. Right. If there's, there's any updates. Walker but, Bueller, what are you doing? They're playing the Marlins right now. Ooh. And I was expecting good things. Yeah, no, not so good. And it is tied. It's tied to three to three. And Walker Bueller has given up five hits and three earned runs. And it's only the and second home run. What, what are we doing, Walker Bueller? Why? Well, he's back. Event to the Marlins? But also, oh. I get, my next update was about the Marlins, so I guess it's timely here. This is what's weird in the timing of trading Luis Arise is they're about to get Braxton Garrett, AJ Puck, and Jesus Lazardo back this week, along with Jake Berger. So, again, not saying that there's, like, hope for them to come back and be seriously competitive, but... They've got some key pieces that have been out that are are coming back and coming back without their biggest vibes guy, Luis Arias. So that's a bummer, but it'll be fun and entertaining. And this is Marlins are a good example here of is still absolutely worth watching them to see these types of guys play and where they're going to be at in their development and their recovery. And then the Red Sox are looking to get a number of guys back off of the IL in the coming weeks. I think that's something we maybe have skated over in our apology tour of the, the Red Sox is that they also still have so many guys who are hurt and they're playing 
relatively well. So starting pitcher Nick Pavetta is going to come back around. He's slated to start on Wednesday. They're going to get Yoshida back, who should return by the end of the week as well, along with a plethora of bullpen arms that, that seem to be getting healthier for them. I'm not super excited to tell you that Justin Steele is back in action after his hamstring injury to start the season, but I am because he, That's okay. he's, he's, not, he's a great he's not, the, he's not the Cubs' like third best pitcher behind Shota Imanaga and Javier Assad. It's true. Yeah, I don't want to say I saw it coming, but I didn't say it because I didn't want it to be true. But I am not surprised that Imanaga and Assad are holding it down over there. They are also getting Kyle Hendricks and Drew Smiley and Jordan Wicks all back on track and healthy. So, yeah, they're just going to have all the options and they're already playing pretty well, which is very rude. They are also getting Cody Bellinger and your guy Sayat Suzuki back this okay. week. So. I am excited to see if Suzuki can pick back up in the hot spot that he left off on. Shout out Minnesota Twins for beating the Seattle Mariners 3-1. to We appreciate you. We appreciate you. So, yeah, the AL West still does not have a 20-win 20, 20 team then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Also, bottom of the fifth, the Athletics are beating the Rangers 2-0. to zero. I did just see that. That's interesting. <laughs> Do it, Athletics. Do it to it. If we lose the AL West to the Athletics, we might. Yeah, if you're going to lose that bad, you might as well. Yeah. And if you guys are on the YouTubes and you are watching me struggle with my eye right now, just know that I am dealing with some sort of like burning sensation. So I'm, I, but I'm here. I'm doing the things things for y'all. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to wrap it up here with just a couple other exciting players that we're glad to see back in baseball. Christian Javier, great news for Astros fans. Maybe not a big enough piece, but a piece indeed that is going to return for the Astros this week. Brian Wu, who hasn't played yet this year, who I was really excited to watch for the Mariners. He's one of our 40-man finds. We're going to get to see him play baseball again soon. Oh, yeah. The Mariners get another pitcher back? (laughs) Hooray. We love that. Sorry, Brian Wu. I actually really like you. But But most importantly, Captain Vibes, Matt Carpenter, should be returning from his oblique injury for the St. Louis Cardinals this week. So just put it out there. The the turnaround, the comeback starts now. Thanks, Maddie Carp. Let's hope, man. Let's hope. Uh, Like I said, you I still don't, I still can't define between like Burleson. Yeah, she texted me the other night and she's like, I got to be honest with you, I can't tell the difference between Alec Burleson, Nolan Gorman, Brennan Donovan, and and who's the other generic looking white guy? I don't know. There's at least one more. Stocky, like just stocky white guys with facial hair. Right. That's and again, if you line them up next to each other, I'm like, oh, OK, yes, I, I see the differences. But when anybody says any of those names. Just the most generic white stocky guy with facial hair pops into my head. I like amalgamate all of their faces together. That's fair. Matt Carpenter is like the old version of that. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Her neck in there. For sure. My eye is literally burning, guys. It hurts so bad. Anyhow, with that, we are going to wrap it up. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Thank you so much for um, giving us all of the ratings and reviews and all of the nice words. Tell, tell the people where they can find you on the interwebs. You can find me for all the good baseball stuffs on Twitter at Tweets. My solo podcast piece, Love and Baseball, comes out every week on Tuesdays, wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on Susie. Where can they find you and, more importantly, Bourbon and Baseball? They can find Bourbon and Baseball on all of the streaming sites. YouTube's, all of the podcasts, audio sites, Apple, Spotify, any of those things. You can find me on the interwebs, on Twitter, Instagram, Bourbon in B Ball on Twitter, Bourbon and Baseball Pod on Instagram. Just type in Bourbon and Baseball on Facebook, like old people. We're, I'm there too. I'm going to leave you with this note because it just makes me laugh. And I was shocked when I found this note. So, Kels, do you know who leads the American League? In strikeouts as a team or an individual player oh, just as an individual player oh i got no idea aaron judge no aaron judge way leads the american league in strikeouts with 44 wow all right hey, that's a fun tidbit that i'm gonna leave all of you with it has with that we will wrap it up and drink all